Let me just quickly tell you about a new machine we invented um, only a year ago. We were approached to uh, manage the Nimikaira project. It was a $180 million federal government investment in a quarter of a million acres of organic land north of Bell Ranald. It was to be prepared for 12 months and it would be leased out to a conservation group for long-term management. And the Nature Conservancy out of the United States won that tender and they have a 75-year lease. So they wanted us to clear 6,000 acres of box thorn. And that varied in size from the cone here to the size of our truck. So they said, you cannot disturb the soil because of indigenous concerns. You cannot spray the bush because it has chemical residue and this is organic land. You cannot mulch it because it will spread the seeds and thorns. So we had to invent a machine, which is the one behind me, and it's called the Enviro Shear. What we developed was a mechanical secateur which applied a minuscule amount of herbicide to the cut surface of the trunk. It took us three months and $18,000 to develop it, and that's now been heralded as the first major breakthrough in box on control across Australia. We have other tractors at home which have boom sprays for the follow-up of spraying as well. So, with machinery, it has to be suitable country for it. This isn't suitable here. We'll be struggling to find a decent area. That's all reclaimed gravel pit. So we're just going to do you a slight demo. I won't start that machine because there's too much dust. But the idea with, with mulching is to reduce your chemical footprint. If we can grind it down to nothing and then spray the regrowth, we'll cut the chemical usage by 50% and we'll cut your volume of herbicide, that's the water content, by 90%. So it goes from 2,000 litres per hectare with a hand spray machine down to 100 to 200. It goes from the equivalent of 10 litres per hectare of herbicide down to 5. Now the Eco Blade cuts it by 97%. So when we look at chemical footprints, it's important. I work for the uh, catchment management at uh, Central Highlands Water. We put out tens of thousands of tonnes of chemical in your water catchment every year, controlling blackberry and, uh, and gorse and so forth. So we're always looking to try and find a way to reduce our footprint. So it's important that when you look at your options, look at all the options. Don't restrict yourself to just spraying or just mulching. You know, we've got drone technology, we've got all sorts of stuff coming through the system. Keep an open mind as to what you should do. But it's a long-term commitment. You won't get control of blackberry in one year. Or gorse. The seed from gorse will last up to 50 years. And I've got gorse areas that we did back in 1974. We still get small plants popping up. Once you disturb that soil, so heavy grazing or any cultivation will regenerate that, 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 that source of material. So it's just a longevity thing with it. Blackberry, of course, comes in with foxes, um, it comes in with birds, spreading the seed, and also you've got the problem that if you spray that bush there, you won't get 100% control no matter what you use or how good you are, because you can't get the coverage. So it's not gonna be a one-shot event, so make sure when you plan about that, don't go in with your native planting the first year, please. Because what's gonna happen is you put these seedling trees in, and next minute you've got all your blackberry and gorse is regrowing again. So it's important to have that planning process to make sure you remove it properly and don't disturb the soil once that's been done. Or do it as little as possible. And you can be quite selective in your spraying. You go from high volume equipment like we've got here down to quite small equipment and just poke around with it. But it's, it's persistence and keep at it. All right, we'll just get some machinery going. And uh, the reach arm is a flail mulcher. It will just simply grind it down. We also have a number of other cutting heads these days. We have the, back, the same as the fixed tooth. And you'll be safe here. Six point, or just on seven metres. It's really ideal for creek banks and things like that. We use it with roadside verges, mainly with oh, Bangkok. Yeah, okay. inch saw blade that will take off um, 8 inch limbs and things like that which we trim back above uh, road sides. He's very cautious, there's a fair bit of gravel under there, it's, a, it's actually a gravel mound.
have spark, so keep your timing in mind that you should position outside of the wettest part of the year. This equipment weighs seven and a half to eight ton. Alex's weighs about six tons, so once they sink into your ground, you own the machine until we can get it out. <laughs> so it's always difficult to shift something that size. So avoid the middle of winter, avoid the middle of summer, and plan most of your work for autumn or spring, uh, which is when you need to start looking at the mulching and so forth. If you have a fairly dry paddock in winter, you can still get it done then. But uh, as far as your follow-up's concerned, your follow-up spraying should be within the next season. So with blackberry, if you mulch it in the autumn, you would spray it late spring, early summer. If you mulch it in the spring, you would spray it in the late summer, early autumn. Don't let the blackberry get away to the point where it's greater than probably 300 mil. You can always re-mulch it again if you have to, if you miss the opportunity. So it's a timing thing. Now, as far as the herbicide selections, you've got a vast choices these days. And it's really a matter of <coughs> whether you um, need to have some residual content as well. So get all your costings in mind before you start your work, get your budgets all done and um, choose a contractor who's got some experience and has adequate machinery and adequate spray equipment. Um, the smaller the machine, the harder it works and the longer it takes. It's not always economical. So the bigger machine is faster and does a better job. We'll often do a second pass on picky gauze and sometimes blackberry with that rear mount mulch you see on the small tractor behind you. That gives you a fine finish. Now what a fine finish does is it builds up the amount of mulch. So you could go from an inch of mulch with a few stalks left to no stalks and it could be two inches thick or three inches thick. That form is the same as what your mulch in the garden does. It prevents weed and even some of the seed from gorse and blackberry coming back through that. So we don't get 100% regrowth when you've done a mulching. Uh, the best you might get is about 70% or even less. So mulching has two impacts. It removes the bulk and it also gives you a chance to, to get that ground cover. Now that breaks down into an organic matter and starts to rebuild your soil structure. It takes some time, but it does help break it down. There's no soil structure here, as you can see. This has all been mined for gravel and so forth over the years. This is all a quarry. And um, you can see the, the, the behind us, the um, amount of gauze that's returned since that planting occurred, because that was all clear in those days. Yes, so our property is um, on the edge of the Wombat State Forest, yes. and it is bush. Yep. So, and we've got areas that are coming up with blackberry, but heavy machinery like this is not going to It depends. Work. Uh, the the posi track machine can get in around a lot of heavy timber. Um, we've been working quite successfully over just over near, um, um, just south of Dale, so this side, between Swiss Mountain and that, on, on the, that next where the cemetery is there. Yeah. There's some heavy timbered blocks there. Happy to look at the job and give you some advice. That's the best thing we can suggest to you. The big advantage too is that um, to give you access, if you've got a, a, a big area, even if you can't get it all mulched, if you can get some tracks and parts of it opened up, at least then you've got access to get in, you can spray it, you can do something with it. When it comes to spraying, the most important thing is to start off with a plan. Clean water is essential. Very essential to look at the, as I said, the right chemical to suit the job you're doing. The wind conditions these days are critical. I mean, our insurance stops at 15 kilometres an hour. Right now it's gusting to 38. So we couldn't spray today legally, as far as that's concerned. We may in a, in a remote area, but keeping in mind that we're responsible for the outcomes. Now, drift is a real serious problem for us, and uh, we have to be mindful of, and when you ring us up and talk about a spray job, we'll ask you, do you have a vineyard alongside or an olive grove or managed forestry or what is there next door? Is there a farmer with uh, you know, a fodder summer crop? You need to have a look around your property. We use iPads to look from an aerial view as well. So we need to have a work plan, which is a, what you like, a safe work management system. We look at what damage could we do if, the, if it left your property, which is really not allowed to. So we have to be very careful about drift so that the job may take several months to be, to be done because we're waiting for the right conditions. It's also important if you're doing blackberries and there's public access, not a bad idea to make some signs to advise that the blackberries are being sprayed or have been sprayed, please do not pick and eat the blackberries because it's important to protect that side of things. Um, and really that's, that's what it comes down to. If you can do the job yourself, make sure you can manage it properly and don't do a part job or whatever because once this stuff gets on top of you, you, you know, you'll be forever chasing. Yes. There's, there's an ideal growth time in their growth. I mean, you obviously don't want to do it when they're sort of slightly dormant in winter. Is that correct? No, it's better to get them when they have some activity. But the smaller the plants, the better. It's less volume of chemical. It's easier to cover. 
So if you can get to it, we would normally start our blackberry spraying probably by October. We've got now, some. We've got blackberries growing sort of throughout the the, the, the paddock, which which we are able to, to just keep on top of with the the, the slasher. Yep. Um, but we've got some closer to the house, which we can't slash because too close to the house. Um, and I'm they're actually quite small because we we, we you know we went through with a um, a digger and, yep. and leveled them, but they're just coming back. So they're only sort of about this big. Ideal spray now. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Oh, ideal. Yeah. yeah. And any of the stuff in the paddock that you're, you're slashing, I would still run over that and spray that. I'd get rid of that while you got it got it down. And it's you, only this big. You spray it before you with with the with the leaf cover before you slash. I well, spray it when, it when when on the regrowth. Right. So when you're all slashed, it's come back up that high. That's the easiest way to slash it. Quality. What, what sort of water quality are we? For anybody who does it themselves. Um, you take a um, a normal. 20 litre bucket or 15 litre bucket and you can see the bottom of that bucket if you throw a 20 cent piece and you can see that 20 cent piece that's clean water in our opinion for spraying so you need to avoid a lot of clay solids because the herbicides will adhere to that in many cases particularly glyphosate um, it'll adhere to the clay particles and you'll diminish the, uh, the, the activity of the chemical so clean water is if you can see the bottom of that bucket uh, most dam water if we see reeds and weeds growing in them it's healthy environment then that can be used for spraying but uh, most of the time Jeff and I and others will, will bring town water with us we will we'll bring a supply with us anyway but if you can supply tank water that's much better than, uh, than taking out of the dam the less impact you have is when you don't go near the water with your with your chemical mixing and with your filling and so forth. stay as far away as you can from it and just a question on coverage yep. what do you mean by coverage is it sort of you know point of runoff if we could say that to you, if you spray the bush and there's nothing dripping off it, give it another pass and then another pass until you just start to see it just slightly start to drip off the bush. So the point of runoff is what we call it. Um, I won't spray blackberry today with the wind the way it is and the dye and so forth. I think you've all seen blackberry sprayed before, but it is important to get coverage. Is there anything you can do without spraying? I mean, you know, if you continually knock it back, how long would it, does it take? Yeah, you know, like you, you know, you mowed it, mowed a ground level, and then the, keep the root doing system that. will remain viable forever. Yeah. yeah. The more you mow it, the stronger the root system becomes, the more resilient it becomes. Oh, really? So you just you're stuck with it, really. Right. Can I ask? Um, I've got a, a, a sort of a, a waterway that's narrow. Yep. It's steep. It's heavily treed. I can get in there with a brush cutter, right. but I don't think we can get any other bigger yeah. stuff in there. Brush cutter, that's good because then when you have your follow-up. It's only a very small amount of spraying to be required. So the timing to do, you, you do the brush cutting, say now, yes, and then yep. wait, and then spray. Late, late spring, you'd spray. So you brush cut now as yep. far as you can. It doesn't matter if you leave big bits of blackberry on the ground. No, no, it'll all just decay away and be right to spray then in, in September. It's better October, to do that November. than spray first and then brush cut. Like it's easier to cut green blackberry than it is the dry canes. Okay. It's a lot easier to walk through it and cut it. Uh, with the blades on the whippersnipper, they'll do a good job. Right.